Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. It's that time of year again. It's spring and that means it's mushroom time. So I'm out here at my honey hole, what I call my honey hole, my honey spot. And uh, this is where I find a lot of my black mushrooms. I find some whites out here sometimes, but uh, the black morels, uh, the white morels, this is my area where I come every year and I look. Now there's a couple other areas on the homestead where I check out too and I'll have to get to those. And I found out, I, I found some other promising areas I hadn't found before but usually where there's water and just up there a little ways there is some sycamore trees and sycamores are high water content and so they need moisture at least that's what i have found you know areas where there's some moisture is a good spot where you can look now it's really hard to find them here because uh the camouflage the, the leaves are so dark um, that uh, they blend right in, especially the blacks. And so um, I'm out here today and I found my first one. You gotta be kind of careful because they blend in so well, they're camouflaged so well, you might step on them. So I'm just <laughs> trying to be careful. I'm kind of sitting here looking around. I found a few already. Um, here's one right here. Let's see if I can get that right there to zoom into. I don't know if that'll zoom or not. But it's right there. It's not zooming very well. I'm still trying to figure out how to get this camera to zoom. See, you can see it right there. There it is. That is a black. I'll just kind of pinch it off at the end. There it is. There's my first black of the season. It's way early. Normally, I go out and I find them around April 14th. And um, it's way early, it's way early. April, April, mid-April is usually the time you go out and look for them. But it's been so warm lately that they're out now. It's end of March. And so, wow, look at that. Really excited because that's going to be for dinner tonight. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's some more. Let's go find some more. So let's see. Um, right up here, there's another one. Right there, then I'll pinch that one off too. And it's interesting because when I came up on this area, I'm like, oh no, because you can tell there's been some animals that have been rummaging through. I don't know if you can't really tell on the camera, but there's some animals around here. You can tell they've been rummaging through these leaves and they've been eating them too because they all know, hey man, it's spring, the mushrooms are out. And so you'll get all kinds of critters who will come out here and dig through the woods and the deer will eat them and the armadillos and possums probably eat them. I'm not sure, but um, when they're out, the critters go crazy and they look for them too. So let's see, here's another one right there. All right there. Look at that. It's a small one, but I'll take it. Oh, I just popped it off. Okay, let's see. You just kind of go slow. Now I gotta get a Walmart bag out here. Hold on a second. I'm just gonna do some raw video today, so I'm not editing this stuff. I'm just gonna hold on. I'm using Walmart bags. I know people say you gotta have. You know, bags with holes in them so that you leave the spawn for the next season. And I and Jamie told me you better double bag it because these Walmart bags aren't made the way they used to be, and so they got holes in them. So you better double bag them. I've never really used the whole bag with holes in them. I know you're supposed to do that, but they keep coming back every year regardless. So if you find one, you're gonna find more. You never find one by itself. So. All it takes for first, guys, is to find that first one and then stop. Stop where you're at and look for more because there will be more. Okay, looking around, looking around. Some of you guys might might see one before I see it on the camera. Um, I'm going to have to look around here and see what I can see. This is usually the spot where I find a good amount and like I said, the blacks usually come first is what they say. And it's usually held to be true for the most part of my experience. You find the black ones before you find the whites. But um, I have found them together in the past. But um, you can see, I don't know if you can tell, but there's been an animal rummaging through this area. The, the leaves are turned up. All right, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna concentrate on where I'm stepping. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and I'll get back with you when I find the next one. Well, I've been sitting here for 
the last few minutes looking around and I don't see any. I see a lot of evidence of critters coming through the, the leaves and you know looking for probably mushrooms so maybe I'm competing with them. I've only found three which is not normal. Usually I find at least 15 to 20 in this spot but it could be still early too. I mean people are always saying hey this is really early for the season and we haven't had a lot of rain yet for the spring so um, we got some rain forecasted for tonight and um, uh, later on this week as well so I think we have some good rains that'll make them pop but uh, there is this mushroom here now you see this these mushrooms that are growing out of this log here um, these I'm told by someone local that they sell these for like ten dollars an ounce on eBay and they say it's for like a tea where you like make them and you use them for like a cancer treatment or I'm not sure some kind of medicinal use for these mushrooms and there's lots of them that grow out of this tree and I have this tree um, just up the hill there I'm going to show you in a minute it's like laden with all kinds of these mushrooms I don't know if they're worth anything or not um, but I may come back and harvest these once I confirm their uh, their variety with this local and see what she says but um, I don't know but I've got a bunch of those here and then there's a ton of them up the hill one thing I have noticed being down here for the last I don't know 20 minutes or so I haven't seen any ticks I have I mean I'm, I'm deep in the woods here and um, no ticks I'm going through all this brush you see right here no ticks and the reason for that, folks, is guineas. We have articles on our website you can check out. I'll link them in the, in the description below. Folks, the number one way to get rid of ticks and chiggers on your homestead is to have, a, have guinea flocks. Um, right now, my neighbors uh, have a, a couple guineas. Um, one of my other neighbors has, I think, like, I don't know, maybe 10 or more running around their homestead. And theirs sometimes come on over to our homestead. My neighbor over in this direction uh, said that there was a, a flock of four guineas hanging out on this side of the mountain. I haven't seen them, but she says they're a flock of four guineas and sometimes they come down and harass her ducks. But um, I don't, you know, I, t I asked Tim and Tim's like, we don't have a flock of four guineas. We have flocks of eight and ten and some other sized flocks that hang out around the homestead and they also come around the mountain here. But the, the guineas, basically, when, they, when they're looking for a food source and they eat a lot of the ticks and chiggers, when they don't find it, they continue to do a spiral you know, that gets wider and wider and wider uh, of an, over an area to continue to look for that food source. And so they do make their way down here, and they have been for, you know, for the last you know, four years since we've lived on this, on this property. And so they have cleaned out the ticks. Uh, they just don't, there's not a reproducing population here anymore. I'm sure there's ticks out here, but I haven't seen any yet. And my goodness, if you go over, over to some other people's places right now, they get ticks. They have ticks all over the place, and it's because they don't have any guineas. The guineas, they're noisy, yeah, and they're stupid birds for sure. But man, sure as shooting, they do eat a lot of ticks and chiggers. So uh, it, that's really cool being out here and not have to be messed with ticks and chiggers. Uh, real blessing. Let's head up over the hill. I'm going to show you these other shrooms and we'll keep an eye out for some more morels. But I want to show you these other ones and see if they're the same as this or not. Um, you know, maybe, hey, comment below and let me know if these are worth anything. Uh, I'm, again, I'm just going by what a local said that these are worth about $10 an ounce and uh, people use them for medicinal reasons, uh, cancer, and other things. I know nothing about that, but um, I'm interested in learning. Uh, look at that. That's a tiny little morel. Really tiny. Um, here's the size of my finger show you how big that thing is it's just coming up he was kind of under a leaf so uh, again we're early in the season I think there's probably a lot of these little guys sitting underneath the leaves and uh, they're coming up so if we just get a good rain and give it a little give it a little more time I'll be I'll be back down here this week to be looking for these guys but there's a tiny little one I'm gonna let him go and I mean he's not worth eating but uh, uh, hopefully a critter won't find it. I'll put some leaves underneath him <laughs> and come back and check on him in a couple days or maybe tomorrow. But that'd be kind of cool. Maybe I can, uh, you know, measure his progress as we go along through the week and see how big he gets. And hopefully um, something won't eat him. Here's another one. Tiny little guy. And uh, I'm going to let him go too. And there's one right here. Tiny little guy. See, they're coming up. But it's just, they need a little more day to, a couple, maybe a day or two to grow. There's another one over here. You can see him. Uh, he's tiny too. So um, they're here, they're out and about. This is, again, my honey hole. I haven't even got up to the tree yet, but um, I'm going to give it another day and then come on back and check it out. Hopefully it's going to rain tonight. That'll make some more pop. 
Uh, but mushroom season, folks, is upon us. Okay, so here's this big dead oak. I think it's a white oak. Not sure, but it is gigantic. And it's got mushrooms, those little mushrooms all over it. Going all the way up and down it. And last year, I think it was even covered more. But as far up as you can see, these mushrooms are clinging to the side of this thing. That. And she said, I mean, the only thing I remember is that she said that they only grow in dead trees. Well, this thing is long dead. But if they're worth that much, $10 an ounce on eBay, I'll be cutting this tree down. Because <laughs> there's mushrooms all up and down it. My goodness. So I don't know if that's it or not, but it looks like that, the one she had before. I'm going to find out. Hey, guys, if you know anything about that, let me know. Put a comment in, in the post below because I will be out here harvesting these things. Um, I don't know what they're used for. Again, she said something about some kind of cancer treatment. I don't know if that's true. You know, there's lots of alternative medicine gimmicks out there, and some of them are absolutely true. I trust uh, alternative medicine way more than I do modern medicine. If you listen to our podcast on the homestead, folks, you know that I think healthcare in this country is doomed. Um, you better do your own healthcare. Here's a bunch more down here. A bunch more. So. Look at that, just all over. Oh, yeah, all over. I don't know if I can get that to focus or not, but. All right, well, there you go. Let's go check out some of these other honey holes. Well, I visited all the honey holes on this side of the mountain. I'm gonna have to go on the other side of the mountain to see what I can find over there, but I'll do that another day. Um, you know, when you're looking for mushrooms, especially morels, um, especially morels, when you find a morel, just find one, that's it, stop. Stop what you're doing and be meticulous about looking around the area to find more. Because where there's one, there's always more, as in the case today. Yeah, I've only found three, you know, three good sized ones I'll eat tonight. But we saw lots of evidence of other ones coming up in a few days, they're gonna be popping. So it's just a matter of getting out there and seeing what you can find and uh, you know enjoying the whole process of it all. You'll notice behind me in the background a couple of big cedars. I'll be putting them on the sawmill this year. So they're right there uh, in a clearing way where I can get uh, the tractor over here, cut them down and haul them out, put them on the sawmill and uh, make some really cool boards with that. Um, I'm hoping to make cedar mantles out of some of these cedars we have here. Uh, there's a lot of really nice sized cedars on the property. We'll be cutting those down and putting them on the sawmill and getting them in the solar kiln. We'll be doing a video on the solar kiln uh, here very quickly. We're just about finished with it. Um, I gotta do a video on it. Uh, so it's, it's basically all done, but uh, we'll be doing that coming up here in the videos uh, soon. But we'll try to do some more. Maybe we'll do another video when we find some more of these mushrooms and show you how we make them, how we prepare them in the kitchen. They're great with cream cheese in the middle and fried in batter and uh, I mean just delicious they are uh, I mean a delicacy of the forest I love finding mushrooms so hey hope you enjoyed the video if you enjoyed this video please check out this list of amazing folks these are our patrons that make all of our videos possible we could not do what we do on YouTube here without them so uh, if you're interested in finding more about the benefits of becoming a patron you can go to patreon.com slash an American homestead other than that like subscribe share us on Facebook check out the videos on the left and we'll see you next time on an American homestead